Hi, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about how to program the FT5, both from the front panel and with the use of a computer. And we'll get started right after this. Okay, before we get started, if you'd do me a favor, if you look below the screen, you'll see a subscribe button. Go ahead and click on that. To the right of that is a thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate if you'd hit that one as well. If you don't like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button, but make sure you hit that one twice. The first thing we're going to input is the national calling frequency, which is a simplex channel. First thing you want to do is make sure you're in VFO, which we already are. Use this button right here on the bottom to switch back and forth from memory to VFO. Also, the next thing, make sure that you're in the right mode. We want FM. Now to get to the frequency that you want to input, unlike the FT3, you kind of have to have, hold this one down for about a second. Input your frequency. Once you got your frequency input, press and hold the VFO memory button for about a second. This is where you're going to select which memory slot you want it in. If it's red and blinking, that means the memory slot is full. White is for empty slots. Go ahead and choose the one you want. Once you've done that, press the VFO memory button again, and it prompts you to input a tag. In this case, we're going to use national call. To get to capital letters, you just keep pressing and the capitals will show up. It's kind of like the old cell phones. And then once you have the tag you want in there, just hit the PTT button, takes you back out and you're all set. Okay, to input a repeater, first thing you wanna do, one, again, make sure you're in the right mode, we are FM. And you wanna choose your frequency. I'm gonna be using 145220. And once you have that, you need to input your tone and your PL tone. There's two ways you can do it. One, you can go to the main menu by pressing and holding the F menu button. Go to signaling. And then you can use number 11 to choose the squelch type and then number 12 for the squelch frequency. Another way you can do it, which is I think a little faster, you go ahead and you just quickly press the F menu button and it brings up this quick menu hit forward and you're going to hit squelch type, tone, back button, then code. And here's where you'll pick your PL tone. In this case, we want 103.5. You can also do a search if you don't know it. As you can see up here, you've got tone and you've got your PL tone number. Now, once you have all that, you're again going to press and hold the VFO memory button. Pick the memory slot you want. We want 15. Press it again. And again, it prompts you for the tag. And again, once you have the tag in, press the PTT button and you're all set. Let's see if this works right. WJ6F testing. And we hit the repeater. That's all there is to it. Now let's go check out how to do this on the computer. Okay, the first thing you want to do for programming with the computer, go to yesu.com and find the FT5. That's gonna be under UHF, VHF handhelds. Click on it, go to files. And what you're gonna to wanna to do, they have an instruction manual here for the SCU19 cable, as well as the driver. Download the drivers, download and open up the installation manual. Read through it. Now this will only work on Windows 10, and 
They haven't gotten around to making it for Windows, so I guess the new 11 that's coming out, and it will not work on Mac. You follow the directions, really easy to do. And once you have that, and make sure you do not hook up the cable before installing the drivers. Once that's all done, you're gonna go down and open up your ADMS 14 website or program. And you're gonna read from the radio. You can either do it here on get or on communication. And before you begin, make sure you have the COM port setting set right, like mine's four. Once you select it, hit determine. Read from the radio. And the way you're gonna do this when you power on the radio, you're gonna hold the F key and then power up the radio. And it'll give you a window that says clone and then it'll have two buttons on the bottom that says receive and send. Once you've done all these directions here, hit okay. It'll tell you to hit the send button on the radio and it starts going. Okay, once completed, hit close. Now, if you don't want to go through all the uh, SCU-19 cable stuff, you can just go and use a uh, scan disk and pull it out of the radio and slide it into your computer, and then it has the same get the data from and send to. Once everything's downloaded, you can start inputting your uh, frequencies. I'm going to start with the simplex, the national calling. It's simplex, so we don't have to worry about any offset direction or any of that good stuff. And then you can name it. And down towards the right, that's where you get your tone mode, your CT, CSS, and DCS codes and frequency. You can also select your transmit power. I have it at high. You can choose if you want it to skip or not. And you can choose what uh, memory bank you want to put it in. And then for an actual repeater, we use one that's really close and has great coverage around here. And it automatically puts in the uh, repeater shift direction and the offset frequency for you. Throw in a name. And on this one, we're gonna need tone. And we're gonna need to choose a frequency. In this case, it's 103.5. Once you have all the information in, it looks good, you got everything how you want it, you can go and do settings on the radio. This is where you pick, like, if you want an automatic power off for 30 minutes or the timeout timer for two minutes or however long you wish to have that. You make all these settings in this area here. Choose how you want your GPS and the compass, if you want it heading up or pointing north up. Your band scope, you have three selections, 19 channel, 39, or 79 channel. How long you want the lamp on, if you want an opening message, or if you want it to have nothing or show the DC power. In my case, I have message and channel name. Once you're done with that, you can work on GM Wires X if you want. You can set up your APRS GPS area in this section. And then in the next one, APRS beacon, that's where you decide if you want to filter things, if you want to get uh, packets from weather, an object, an item. You can choose how you want it, if you want metric or standard. If you want to use ambiguity, ambig excuse me, ambiguity, what this does is the more, what it does is it basically cuts off digits from the end of your uh, Latin long. And the shorter the Latin long, the less accurate it is. Good way to hide if you start off at your house and you don't want everybody and their brother to know where you live. You can do choose your beacon interval, everything from 30 seconds all the way up to an hour. Most common, five minutes. You can have to choose if you want to do it manual, smart beaconing, or auto. I just use auto. It's easier. 
And if you have a status text you want to put in there. Like on mine, when it goes out, people see that I'm on Simplex and they can contact me if they choose. In the APRS pop-up, you can choose which things you want to see messages from. And if you want to hear when they come on or not. For the DigiPath, it's just standard use the Wide 1 and Wide 2 1. And then you have memory. You have group memories for CAM groups and the memory banks. And you can change these names. If you go to different cities frequently in, or different states, you can name them by state or city, however you choose to do it. Once you're done with that, close it out. And then you're going to write to the radio. It's going to give you another set of instructions. When you're ready, hit OK. And then on your radio, you're going to push the Receive button. And once you're done, the radio will reboot itself. You can go ahead and hit Close. Save your file if you choose. And then when you're all done, go ahead and close out of the program. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, check out one of these other videos, and thanks again for watching.